Welcome to Overcome America Hair Loss Summit. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I'm your host, and today I am with Nell Sanders. She has lived 20 years with alopecia and currently works for the National Alopecia Riata Foundation as the Youth Mentor Program Coordinator. She's also a student at Sarah Lawrence College, where she studies politics and environmental economics. Nell has come a long way with her own personal journey with alopecia, and now she rocks this ball look with confidence. She got involved with NAF when she was a teenager and co-founded the mentorship program, which connects children and young adults with alopecia. Welcome, Nell. I'm so happy to have you here, and I can't wait to learn more about the youth mentor program. Hi, Valerie. Thank you for having me. So, Nell, tell us a little bit about your story. I know um, you started losing your hair at a very early age, so tell us what that was like. Yeah, so um, I'm 21 now, and I was diagnosed with alopecia when I was 18 months old. Um, so I basically lived my entire life with alopecia, and I've had alopecia areata, I've had totalis, and now I have universalis, which is no hair on my entire body. Um, but, you know, after all of this, you know, journey, this you know, whole journey with alopecia, I've really come to embrace it. I've been rocking the bald look now for uh, like five years. Um, I'm super involved with NAF and I love the community. Um, but I started losing my hair in large chunks when I was, you know, four, five, and six. I lost all of it when I was eight and started wearing wigs. Um, and then I wore wigs up until I was 16 when I actually went to my first NAF conference. Um, and I went there, I made some friends. I took my wig off that first night and I have not put it back on since. So after that point, I got involved with NAF. I started volunteering and speaking at the conferences. And then me and another young adult um, decided to create this mentorship program. So we got the community to put a lot of input into it. And then we built the platform. And now it's been running for about two and a half years. So and I run it. So it's really awesome. Amazing. So tell me about the conference. I've never been to one. I hope to go this year. But Share with us what is what is it like to go to a conference? Yeah, so I guess my parents had known about NAF for a while, but we never thought of going to the annual conference that NAF has been hosting for tons and tons of years. Um, it's over the summer, each summer, um, usually around the end of June. Um, and it's in a different location each summer, which is super fun because the last few years I've gotten to really travel around the country going to these conferences. This upcoming summer, it's in D.C., Washington, D.C. Um, but basically, it's four days where you're in a hotel with so many people and the norm is to be bald. So you're walking around and most people are bald. Um, you know, obviously people are wearing their wigs or people have different stages of alopecia, but it's kind of a crazy experience to feel like you're with your people and that you're totally free and accepted. Um, so we do everything from workshops to dance parties, to um, support group meetings, to um, you know presentations on some of the medical research. It's really a range. We go out and do activities or kids camps and teens camps so you can bring your kids. Um, and really it's like a huge age range. It goes from like super young kids with alopecia to um, you know elderly people with alopecia. So that's really awesome. Um, I will say, like, I think it is one of the most life-changing experiences I've had going to that first conference. Um, mm -hmm. And then each year, it's just been so wonderful to touch base with the community. So when did you decide, because you said you decided at the conference that you were not going to wear your wig anymore. What happened? Yeah, it was not like a concrete decision. I remember I made some friends in the teens camp because I was still a teenager then. Um, and I had never really taken my wig off in front of people, not in front of my friends, you know, super rarely, like I really was attached to it. Um, but I decided to take it off. <laughs> I remember the first night, all of these girls that I had met, we went and we were hanging out in this hotel room in the circle, giving each other head massages, like a train of girls <laughs> giving each other head massages. Um, Cause we had all decided to take our wigs off. And then we made a pact that night that we were not going to wear them tomorrow to the teens camp, which was, you know, super normal because most kids at the teens camp were bald already and not wearing their wigs. Um, but for me, I remember I decided not to put it on. I did my makeup all crazy and I went downstairs to the lobby to get breakfast with my mom. And I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, everyone's looking at me. I look around and of course no one's looking at me. Like people are just waving at me because I look completely normal to them. Um, and it was just, an addictive feeling. I mean, I felt so liberated. Um, 
And then, you know, I didn't put it back on for the rest of the conference and decided that I was not going to go to the airport with it on. Um, so, and then each day after that, I was like, you know, I don't want to do this. Um, and then I made a big decision to go back to school, uh, junior in high school, uh, without the wig on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And what was that like? What did people say? Oh, well, um, I did a huge social media post, um, that summer cause I was, it was summertime. So, um, yeah, I posted on Facebook and Instagram and most people knew about it. Um, but I remember I was so nervous in the car. I made my best friend meet me outside and I wore this crazy outfit with heels and I put sunglasses on and I did like these temporary tattoos on the back of my head too. Um, and I just like tried to strut with confidence and some people looked, but most people, um, I think we're just trying to, you know, be nice about it. Um, I think I became an instant badass and people didn't mess with me after that. So, yeah. Did you feel like a badass? I did. I mean, that first day I was really nervous, but then the rest of that year, I just felt so empowered. My life really completely changed after I decided to accept my alopecia. And I, my version of accepting it was taking the wig off. Everyone goes through a different experience and it doesn't mean that, you know, because you still wear a wig, that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just about you feeling like it's not something that has so much control over you or something that um, makes you so afraid. So, mm -hmm. and stop being did that. You, did you find out if people were concerned about it or that they were talking about it or anything? Because what I'm noticing as I'm doing the interviews and obviously with my personal experience is that we have this idea that everybody has been looking at us for all these years and everybody is noticing. And at the end of the day, nobody cared. And it was all in our head that everybody was staring. So was it a shock for some people? Because I still get like, even today, I got messages like, oh my God, I had no idea. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think it was a mix. I mean, I think a lot of people already knew because I, before I stopped wearing my wigs, I had gone through so many years of bullying that I knew that if someone was really trying to figure out what I was going through, I would just tell them because it just made that easier because then they felt bad or whatever. And they were like, Oh crap. Um, but I think for the most part, yeah, people were just like, okay, this is the new Nell. I mean, <laughs> it went, I went through a phase where a lot of people were like obsessed with touching my head, which was kind of weird, but that was, I mean, the only, the only thing, but most people just didn't care. I mean, that's like the main thing. Um, and I think that's totally true, especially when you wear something like a wig or a hat where you're physically hiding your alopecia you feel like everyone knows and hiding it is contributing to that feeling. But, um, really, you know, most people have their own insecurities. So, or everyone has their own insecurities. Yeah. And I think it really, uh, there is a lot of power into sharing, like you said, because the moment you share, like that fear is gone, right? Like you already shared. So what are you, what are you losing? What, what is, what do you have to hide? There's nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. And so what I, the, the way I handled my own was not doing like a mass public service announcement, you know what I mean? Like not to everybody, but like started talking to my best friend, you know, another friend, like just little by little, cause I think if, I think it's, a, it's, it's really hard to share. So if we go, you know, baby steps, um, it gets easier or it was easier for me to communicate. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I think again, like everyone goes through their own experience with accepting it. I think for me, because I went from wigs to this, which is obviously night and day kind of, I felt like I had to almost like come out as an alopecia person. Mm -hmm. But, um, but the other approach totally works too. I think it's just whatever you feel the most comfortable doing. Right. Right. Same thing, like you said, um, whatever you feel comfortable with wearing or not wearing hair. So for you, you look amazing and you, you know, you feel amazing like that, right? I feel amazing with hair 
and I love hair. So I wear hair and I wear up eyelash extensions. And as of right now, I don't think I will ever feel comfortable going anywhere with no hair. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what the difference is right now for me is that I'm not hiding. Is that yeah. this is how I feel comfortable. And this is how I'm choosing to live my life because it's easy for me. I get to get up in the morning, boom, go, I'm ready. Um, it's just kind of like a lifestyle, but it's a choice rather than wearing the hair because I was hiding, which was the reason why I got it to begin with. Um, and I, you know, it's two different places in your life, two different ways of being and feeling right because one is hiding and you're sad and depressed and you don't want to connect and then with the other one this is this is who you want to be and so um i think you know the beauty of it is to the journey right like it took me don't get me wrong like it took me over 10 years to get to this place so it's not easy mm -hmm. it's not easy and i've been there and i've you know gone through the self-doubt and not believing in myself and thinking that nobody was going to love me and all the things. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. And that's why I'm doing all these interviews and, you know, speaking to people like you, because you, all of you get to come to the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for, for sharing your inspiration. And I know like you've had, had opportunities to share also with like big magazines and you did an awesome video. So <laughs> what that has, what was that like for you? Um, yeah, so I did a video in partnership with Allure magazine, um, when I was a senior in high school talking about my alopecia. Um, and when I first decided to do it, when someone reached out to me on Facebook and asked me if I wanted to come to New York and to be honest, I was just looking for an excuse to skip class and go to New York. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did an interview with these two wonderful women and uh, didn't really know much about it. And then kind of forgot about it. And then a few months later, um, my Facebook started blowing up. And by the end of like, you know, two weeks after that point, it had gotten about 3.1 million views on social wow. media. Um, so it's kind of crazy um, to be someone that was once so secretive to then have shared your most personal story with you know, millions of people. Um, but it was, you know, a very humbling experience and also wonderful. Um, and I'm just glad that I got to reach out and tell people, um, that, you know, you don't have to be afraid to hide and also that you will come to this other side as you were, as you were saying. Um, but also there is importance, I think, in the journey itself, in the hardship. Um, you know, cause I, I interview people for my job to become a mentor for this mentorship program that I'll talk about in a bit. Um, and they all talk about how the hard parts are actually the parts that are the hard parts of having alopecia are the parts that made them grow the most mm -hmm. um, and become the most developed, confident people. And I know for a lot of people listening to this who are struggling with alopecia, it may seem like the end of the world and like it's the most terrible thing. And that's totally valid. It really does feel like the end of the world and the most terrible thing. But you will get to a point, you know, maybe a little bit later after you watch the series or maybe a, a little bit longer later um, mm -hmm. where you look back and you're like, oh, my God, like I, I just went through this huge, amazing transformation. Um, and then, you know, you can view other people's problems in such a different light. You become so much more compassionate um, and can really see the beauty in all people because it's not the superficial thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I wanted to ask you, because I think that not a lot of people, like the younger crowd are speaking about this. Um, has this, has your alopecia been in the way of your relationships? Yeah. So we do talk about this actually a lot at um, the NAF conferences. We have a young adult uh, support group meeting workshop thing. Um, I think it did when I was a lot younger. So, I mean, I stopped I embraced my alopecia when I was um, 16. So it's been, you know, a few years since I've kind of come to the other side. But when I was a lot younger, I think I was a really lonely child. I think I even convinced myself I was an alien or something, like not from this planet. Because um, I always felt like I had something 
super wrong with me. So that mm -hmm. definitely affected my friendships. Um, and then when I first started dating people, I guess in early high school years, um, it was like a hurdle that I had to get over to tell the person that I have alopecia because I wore wigs and it was kind of, I feel like, I feel like it was obvious that I had alopecia. Maybe they didn't know. Um, but yeah, so I always had, would have to sit them down and be like, okay, so I have this condition and I don't know if you know about it, but I have no hair under this fake hair. And, um, I was always so worried that people would be, you know, judgmental or break up with me right then. And I had some people that were like that, but for the most part, especially with the guys that I dated, um, back then, you know, they were like, I don't care. So, <laughs> or like, I don't even, I didn't even know. But. That's amazing. And I also feel that in our community, a lot of people um, get a lot of praise when their partners are accepting. It's kind of like, oh my God, he's so great. He's accepting. And it's like, why shouldn't he be accepting, right? Like, why is it a great deal that they're accepting? I feel like everybody should be accepting, but I think because we go through this experience, like you said, we, we become more compassionate, but at the end of the day, we should all be that way. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be like, Oh, you're, you're so great because you're yeah. accepting somebody's differences. And I think actually that's one of the benefits is that, you know, having a condition like this weeds out the bad people in your life really quickly. Cause if you have a friend who's not going to support you because you are losing your hair, I mean, get rid of them immediately. If you're dating someone who doesn't support you, is not attracted to you for who you really are, get them out of here. Like, you know, so um, it's kind of like the alopecia superpower to weed out the bad ones and see the good ones. And then you have really amazing, you know, amazing friends. And um, we have this panel, this young adults perspectives panel at the conference where a bunch of young adults to talk, talk to parents who ask questions. It's one of our most popular panels. And someone this past year, a, a mother who has a teenage daughter asked one of us, you know, is dating going to be a problem? And unanimously, everyone on the panel was like, you, your daughter will find the most real person because exactly. she will have gotten all of those crappy guys out of the way first. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot to look forward to with that. That is so true. So true. You, you'll, you'll, you'll see who truly cares about you. Mm -hmm. for you as a person yeah yeah so what do you think has been the best part of having alopecia um yeah so <laughs> there's so many things um so the community is the best i mean in terms of just yeah i think it's like meeting people with alopecia other people with alopecia um having be like been introduced to NAF and being able to do this amazing work that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, that's been the greatest benefit I have, you know, brothers and sisters and friends and family, you know, that's what it really feels like. Um, mm -hmm. so that's definitely been the best part. And then I think just, you know, like the journey that I had to go through, um, and all the growth that I went through because of having my alopecia, that's been, you know, it, it's who I am. So my alopecia is who I am. Yeah. So if you, if you had the chance to go back, is there anything that you would have done differently? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, that's a hard question. Cause yes and no, I think I would tell myself that it's going to be okay and everything's going to work out in the end. Um, but I don't want to change the way that it happened. Um, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, you know, I want to, I'm glad I went through all the experiences, the good and the bad. Yeah, yeah, no, same, same for me. I think that um, the growth, I would out and change that for anything um, because it forced me to look within and get to know myself and what I really want for my life. And it forced me to choose my life, right? I was at a point where I was given up because of my hair. And then I was so low at, a, at, a, at the lowest point of my life that I got to choose my life. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that, it's like an immediate, immediate 360 degree boom. Okay. So if you're going to choose your life and you have to let go of this sadness and all this stuff, and then you start fighting for something new. Um, 
So I, 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 I can totally really, like, I wouldn't change that because I think that drive that I have and the, mm-hmm. yeah, the drive that I have and who I am today definitely came from that, from knowing I'm not my hair, right? But understanding that conceptually because mm-hmm. at the beginning you, I think, so one of the hardest things about hair loss is that you have to stare, you have to look at yourself in the mirror every single day. Mm-hmm. So you can't avoid that. You have to see it every day. And, and so I think what helped me was to, to understand that, yes, you're looking at something, you're looking at an image, but I'm not the image. Like I am, you know, my soul, what I do, who I am, who I, you know, how, like, yeah. not my body, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think, I mean, that's something it's, it's a really, um, Hard point to get to if you don't have this experience, right? Because for everybody, like you are, like you know, you are what you look like, and all these things. So, I I think that alopecia has taught me that I am not my hair, I'm not my body, and I can, you know, I get to create the life that I want despite the way I look. Yeah, and I do think that you know even people without alopecia, that's really how everyone should be. And there are a lot of pretty people that have really ugly personalities. And, you know, I mean, maybe they get away with certain things before people realize who they really are. But, you know, that's not how you want to be as a person in this world. So um, I think alopecia really teaches you that the work is on the inside, you know, and that's the important, the important stuff. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the youth mentor program, because that is your creation. I want to hear all about it. Yeah. So, um, so the youth mentor program is, is a pretty new program. It's, you know, a couple years old. Um, and I've been working on it for like four or five years or the idea of it since I was 16. Um, but basically we, um, we have a whole bunch of young adult mentors in our database and, um, mentees so children with alopecia and parents and family members can go onto our website um, look up a mentor that they're interested in based upon common interests or usually location is our main search filter um, and then request them and they'll get matched and kind of have a a pretty um, informal relationship based around you know guidance and mentorship um, and friendship so Um, it's been really successful so far. We have tons of people. Um, and I think it's going to be one of NAF's biggest programs, uh, going forward. But, um, yeah, I mean, I mentor two girls myself and a lot of my friends do in the alopecia community. Um, but really it's based around this idea that no child should feel like they are alone in this. Um, and it's kind of trying to, um, make the hardship and that long journey go a bit faster because you, um, probably myself too, you know, like everyone who was of a certain age grew up really feeling alone, I think, um, in, in our own journey. And there's a lot of access to information now with social media, but like that didn't exist when I was going through this when I was a kid. I mean, I literally thought I was the only person. That's why I thought I was an alien. So, um, so no kid should go through that. You know, no family should feel alone. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, um, that's key is the power of community and knowing that you're not alone. I mean, the, just the statistics shocked me when I learned that there is 6.8 million people that have alopecia in the United States. Mm-hmm. That's just in the States, 149 in the world. So you're not alone and you get the chance to be with your community. And that's why I think that um, going to the conference is super key. You know, being part of a support group that it's actually supporting you, not bringing you down, right? Because uh, sometimes, and I've been part of support groups that it's kind of like a negativity fest. And so you complain and then everybody agrees and everybody comes playing together. So being part of a positive environment where, like NAV, where, you know, we all share with each other what has worked out for us. Um, and we actually get to support each other, I think it's so important. And that's also why I created a Facebook group uh, for whoever is participating in the, in, the, in the summit 
so we can all learn from each other and share our experience. You know, what are we doing? And I just think it's, it's so important to become part of this community. Like you said, like when you want to ask you what was the best part, you said, you know, getting involved with NAV. So I really invite everybody to, you know, get involved with the community, get involved with NAV. And actually, NAV has been so generous that uh, they will be doing a raffle to give away one registration to the conference in June. So we'll be sharing more details, but basically you're going to have the opportunity to enter the raffle up until March 31st, and then they're going to do the raffle in April 3rd. And one of you will have the opportunity to go to the conference, which I'm sure now you'll be there. Yep, I will be there. And fingers crossed, I'll make it too. <laughs> so how exciting is that? You get to know your community, your people. I know, you know, we've had conversations offline where meeting people that have alopecia is so powerful. Like you really feel like you just met your family. Mm -hmm. So I really uh, encourage you to check out the, the conference. And if you can make it, definitely go. Yeah. Now, is there, uh, Nell, is there anything else that you want to share with the audience before you go? Is there a piece of advice that you want to leave us with? Hmm. Okay, a piece of advice. Well, I think I've said most things. Um, definitely reach out. I'll just say a couple details of how you can find our information. So it's super easy if you just look up online, NAF, N-A-A-F dot org. Um, and then regarding the mentorship program, you just scroll down and you'll see it right there. So you can apply, um, just click the link. You can apply as a family looking for a mentor, but you can also apply as a you know young adult who wants to be a mentor. Um, so please do, you'll be talking to me, um, and please come to the conference if, if you, if you can, it's a really amazing experience. Yes. Well, thank you now so much for accepting my invitation and to everyone. We have two more weeks, so I'll see you in the next interview.